What's up everybody? My name is Miles and this is the Make with Miles channel. Today we're going to be making a super cool Japanese skill toy called a Kendama. Let's go. A Kendama is made up of three pieces. The Serato, the Ken, and the Tama. The Serato is the cups, the Ken is the handle, and the Tama is the ball. To start this project, I cut off the ends of a piece of maple for the can. I cut the corners off to make it easier to turn on the lathe. My friend Caden had loaned me one of his kendamas so I could roughly copy the shape and size. Every once in a while, I would hold up the kendama he gave me so I could revise my shape even further. Once it was turned to its final shape, I sanded and turned the concave shape of the base cup. Next thing I had to do was turn the serrato. I cut a piece of wenge, put it on the lathe, and turned it to the size and shape I wanted. I was careful not to turn the middle area down too far because that is where a hole needed to be drilled. I shaped the concaves of the cups and cracked off the excess wood. I then mounted it in my chuck so I could turn down the area that had been cracked off. I sanded it smooth and even used micro mesh. 12,000 grit may be a bit too fine because it will get scratched and dented eventually. I just got a bit carried away, but it does look nice. Now that that was done, it was now time to drill the hole in the Serato so everything could fit nicely together. The hole had to be tapered, so I faked it by drilling halfway through from one side and then drilling from the other side with a larger bit. This worked perfectly. I then drilled the tiny hole for the string to go through in both the Ken and the Serato. I thought it would be cool to have some sort of design on the Ken. So I used some attachments on my wood burner to add a custom touch. I was now on to part three of the kendama making process, the ball. Now I've never turned a sphere before, so it was quite a learning process. I watched some of Frank Howarth's videos about sphere turning and they really helped. The links are in the description. I knew I wanted the Tama to have a striped pattern so it would be easy to track in midair. So I resawed some walnut and ran it through the planer to create a thin sheet. I resawed a piece of maple and ran the pieces through the planer to get the surfaces flat. I repeated this process one more time so I could get the right amount of layers to create the striped pattern. After all the layers were cut, I glued everything together to create the blank for turning.
After I cut off the ends of the blank, I then found the center of each face so I could mount it on the lathe. I turned it down to the rough shape of a sphere. I then cut the ends off with the bandsaw. I mounted these wood cups onto the headstock and tailstock, which were the right size to hold the rough sphere that I just turned. I then mounted the ball in between the cups and began to turn. I found that it worked best if you took light passes with the tool and went slowly. The way I turned the sphere was by taking light passes until the axis that I was working on was smooth. I then rotated the ball 90 degrees and repeated the smoothing process until I chased it down to a sphere. If you want a more detailed explanation of how to do this, go watch Frank's video. Once I was satisfied with the work I'd done, I sanded it down. I used a vibrating sander on the Tama so it didn't leave any noticeable scratches. Once the sanding process was finished, I then had to drill a hole in the ball. I was very nervous about not getting the hole centered, but I used one of the cups that I put on the lathe to hold the ball. I drilled the hole about three quarters of the way through and then I drilled a small hole all the way through for the string. I then used a large countersink bit to create the bevel. Next, I drill the hole in the base cup to remove some weight and make it more balanced. It was now time for applying the finish. Most kendamas don't have a finish, but I couldn't resist because it would look so much nicer. I used the mineral oil beeswax finish, which I wiped on with a rag. I threaded a string through the hole of the tama and tied the knot so it could hang freely. I then masked off the bevel so the inside of the hole wouldn't be finished. I then hung it up so it could be painted easily. I spun the tama and sprayed it with the clear coat so it could get an even finish. After the first coat, I sanded it with 320 grit sandpaper and gave it a second coat. After a few more coats, I cut the string and peeled away the masking tape. The kendama was almost complete, but the last step that remained was stringing it up. I had an extra string and bead pack from Kendama USA lying around, so I used it. Kendamas either have a bead or a tiny bearing, which allows the tama to spin freely without twisting the string. The small bearing is a better option, but a bead will work too. First, I threaded the string through the hole of the tama and tied a knot. I then threaded it through one of the small holes of the serrato. It matters which side you thread it through depending on if you're a right-handed or left-handed player. Next, I used a plastic loop that came with the string to thread it through the hole of the can. I tied a knot and pulled it flush with the surface. After I put the serrato onto the can, the build was complete. I wanted to really put this kendama to the test, so I called up my friend who had loaned me his kendama. Caden's been my friend for a long time now, and he's been playing kendama for less than two years. He's really good. If you like kendama stuff, go give Caden a follow on Instagram. The link is in the description.
I especially enjoyed this project because it introduced challenges such as turning the sphere and drilling on curved surfaces. It was also really fun to have Tayden test my kendama, seeing as he's been playing for nearly two years. Like I said before, you can go check out Tayden's Instagram and say hi. If you want a more detailed video of how to turn a sphere, go check out Frank Howarth's videos. If you liked this video, you might enjoy some of my others. And if you want to see more of what I'm up to, hit the subscribe button and follow me on Instagram. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.